It's like a yeah, like a Lao style. Now that's a slurper dream right there. <laughs> the texture of those noodles is just like oh, I like it actually. Awesome. They're so gooey. That's what they are. They're gooey. Heartwarming, comforting bowl of noodles. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you are someone who likes to slurp your noodles, you need to visit this place. Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to tonight's video. So, just a little bonus here because after a little bit of talking, all of us, three meals in a day, that's, it's a lot, especially when you get the full on, the full on meat feast and then the full on chili feast. And so tonight, we're gonna go old school. We're gonna go for the straight up street food cart, focus on the atmosphere. Welcome to tonight. We are visiting Jehol. It is actually well within walking distance of all the places that we know. But again, this street is so full of amazing street food. You just, there's just never enough time to check them all out. So this is going to be just a tasty bowl of noodles. And again, full on street side street food noodle slurping atmosphere. Let's see what they got. Okay, so the noodles that Jia Hong are serving are an example of how Konkin gets a lot of influence also from Lao. So again, the cool, unique location of Konkin just right in the middle means that it has a ton of Thai food, but also a ton of Lao food. And actually this, it might even be Chinese and Vietnamese. You can see the sausages here are definitely like a Vietnamese type of sausage. And then you have just pork options across the board, the blood, oh, okay, and even chicken feet. So you've got a huge range of how you can set your noodles up just how you like it. The prices here are amazing too. And with a glass display case, this kind of really sets the mood, you know? For street food, I love seeing the classic stainless steel cart. And you see, when they set the cart up on the risers like that, this cart is not going anywhere. They are in business for the long run. Yeah, this is a locally loved place. Let's go taste the noodles. <laughs> yes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that looks so like Kalpia, like in Lao. They're so pretty. Oh, wow. Okay, so sitting down at the table, it's like a little noodle Christmas here. So colorful. Oh, man. And the ingredients are so diverse, like for a dish like this, this one's just all chicken, chicken feet. I think I know whose that is. But then, man, oh, thanks, man, yeah. And then this, you can just really see the noodle, the most clear. And the noodle actually is like translucent. It's really thick. It's a rice-based noodle. And yeah, like, you can easily see the Lao influence in that one. Oh, this is just great. And then in the center, we've got a, like, the chicken that was used in the soup in the stock for all of these bowls. Just got a taste tester right in the middle there. It's just a great street side noodle feast for tonight. Awesome. Wait, 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 Just a beautiful noodle filled street side feast in Khan Ken tonight. We got like six different bowls of noodles to try and this may or may not be round one. Over the years, who can count the number of amazing examples of delicious Thai street food I've been able to have with Mark. Finishing off the year 2020 with this Christmas bowl of noodles, nothing but thanks. Cheers to you all as well. We wish you all well. Might I call this our noodle slurping dream bowl to count down the new year? Maybe. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining us. We are definitely focusing on the two specials tonight. Great job. Tom Sen. That, that needs to be a slow-mo.
that is that is a just heartwarming, <laughs> comforting bowl of noodles. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Mm. Now that's a slippery dream right there. <laughs> the texture of those noodles is like... Mm. Oh, I like it, actually. Wait, 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 wait. Awesome. They're Thanks, so man. Gooey. That's what they are. They're gooey. Oh, they thank like you, dude. Are... Thank you. The noodles almost feel like they're... Um, okay, so I had a taste while Mark was filming, but I want to show you all the ingredients just packed into this bowl of Gui Zap. Amazing noodles. I was obsessed with these in Luang Prabang in Laos, actually. Okay, so you've got pork spine, then some type of tofu, probably with pork, steamed sausage, which is called muya, then more pork, the soft ribs. Okay, okay, that's it, because the noodles are even on their own, they're incredible. The noodle, it's so thick, it's so gummy, it's so gooey, it's so fun. Yeah, you can get a feel for the noodle even before you're chewing on it. Wow. It actually looks good jiggling around like that. <laughs> the sheer gumminess, texture. If you are someone who likes to slurp your noodles, it is fun. I've learned, I've learned a thing or two about slurping a good noodle in Southeast Asia, but okay. You need to visit this place. Mm. What do you think? So Lee has ordered her favorite, of course. If there's option of chicken feet, you've got to know she's going for it. So. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay, that's good, my guy. That was a good one. That was a good one, my guy. Yeah, that was a good one. Thank you, Micah. Thank you. Micah did the perfect pour. Micah, that was a chili oil perfect top up right there. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Just look at that color. That that needs to be a slow-mo. Oh, and the blood cake is awesome. Perfectly textured, so thick, so awesome. Oh yeah, you see how your, your noodles just transform, take on a whole new okay, level of saliva creation. Well. that around a little bit for this bite. I'll get a piece of the Muyal, the Vietnamese sausage. Yeah, the ingredients in this are so deep. There's like 10 different things going on. There's like three different kinds of steamed sausage. Each of them just slightly different texture, very soft and silky though, but not as silky as that blood cake. That bite, that's been the best bite for me of this whole bowl of noodles for all. Mm. Great work. Oh, wow. Okay, so we finished her bowl. Yeah, we were taking a while to describe everything, but so we're gonna walk back over. I think Lee and I are gonna share another of the Dom Sen. The jo here smells so wonderful. That's the porridge, jo mo. They make it with pork, but they have so many different ways you can customize, well, pretty much everything. Just look at this. So gao lao is another favorite. So even I gotta come back here and and find out more of the ways that they're serving this. Okay, so again, recommend the Gui Zap and the Tom Sen. If you don't read Thai, here's a beautiful picture menu. The Gui Zap, the Tom Sen, and the Jo Mu, that's the one right there. Okay, so two more bowls on the way. Let's go sit down. Okay, so one more time. The first bowl oh, is Gui Zap, and I called it a Lao noodle because that's where I've had it so many times. Okay, and Mark's right next to me, so I'll say one of the better food trips, okay, just the more fun trips we've ever had to Luang Prabang. Was that like two years ago? Check out those videos of Mark's. Okay, but then this bowl, so different. Tom Sen, a few of the sausages they add are the same, but the noodles, it's all about the noodles for both of these. Mung beans are the main ingredient here, the small green mung bean. 
they use in the flour to make these, and they're like stretchy, a little sticky, but just so different. Not slippery or gooey like the Sen Gui Chap. Yeah, and I'm loving that blood cake. Also, I guess just having fun with the camera right now. Okay. I didn't realize ordering chicken feet, it's literally the entire bowl of chicken feet. Yeah, she loves it. No, she loves it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I realized something about this chicken soup. So the, the, your table manners are gonna kind of have to step down one notch. That bonus bowl of the chicken bones, the, there's a lot of meat on the bones though, but that chicken stock mm. and the broth is so wonderfully peppery. It is amazing. That chili oil is, is a highlight of this dish, for sure. Mm. Oh. Wow. That's just like... Yeah. This food is just too fun to think of table manners first. These chicken bones are so soft. They've been cooking for so long. If it wasn't appropriate to spit them out, you would be able, I think, to just swallow them. <laughs> you might even be able to get away with swallowing those bones. You eat the bones, <laughs> That is amazing. And that is one of the better chili oils I've had in a while. The pepper level is on point. I think the highlight here is actually the chili yeah. oil. Mm -hmm. That's what totally makes it for me. Mm. Wow. It's like, it's like rare to be able to have such an awesome view of street food right next to the street but it's not really noisy. Yeah. It's so quiet here downtown. Yeah. It's at night, right? Because it's the morning. Yeah, yeah. It's morning. This area. is the morning market morning street. Market. Yeah. Yeah, this is a great place actually for like proper cool street food atmosphere, but not crazy. Hi, Gum. Finally, the chicken bone soup, which is called Ben Baika, added in a ton of chili in there, so roll that around, all that looks delicious. And as you the noodles are definitely the best in that. I like the mixture though, I like all the difference in textures. All of them kind of gummy, silky, extremely chewy. This is definitely a soup for people of ages 1 to 99. All you need are just basic chopstick, chopstick skills, definitely not teeth. And all the dishes are good, but really most of the fun comes from the atmosphere. Okay, the chili oil is also fun, it is amazing, but just the street food atmosphere is just like complete right here. We are sitting on metal tables, the low stools, just a table full of slurping bits of fun, and then the the road, thankfully, is not so crazy loud, so you can still feel like right in the action of the nightlife, but it's it's not just overpowering with sounds of engines and motorbikes. It's really a cool place. I like it. Yes. Nice, nice. Did you cross the street? She's really nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's actually pretty tasty. Do you want to taste these noodles? Babe, this is really good. This is a good place. One trick that I've learned with noodles, actually one thing that made me scared of them first is because when they're so spicy, you can't, you can't get too excited or you risk having the tail of the noodle flick chili oil up into this area, and if you get a chili oil flick into the eye, you're gonna be regretting it. <laughs> so, these dishes are so fun, but you just have to restrain yourself just a little bit if you are putting in that much chili oil, because for both fun, but also danger, things can get spicy, and chili oil can start to fly. Wow. Yeah, the pepperiness of the chili oil is amazing, eh? Wow. It is
is that time, the last bite of noodles. Oh wow, I absolutely love this dish. I will be back. Jae Hong, I will not forget you next time I'm in the mood for a seriously <laughs> slurpalicious, delicious bowl of amazing Kapiak Sen noodles. Wow. Okay, let's go have some Nam Tau. Okay, everyone, so we have said good evening to Mark, Ying, and Michael. We are here from the noodles, and some of the richness of that noodles is perfectly cut by this classic Thai, also a street food snack, also sold in this beautiful, simple stainless steel cart. It is Nam Tau. It is one of my favorite snacks in all of Thailand, and this is one of my favorite spots to have it. Actually, over there near my house, I've counted six that open on my street, but I come over here because I love their recipe and I love the couple. They are so hardworking, and you can see they are, well, locally loved. There is never not a line of motorbikes, a line of cars even going out into the street. They are on their feet from when they open for hours. It's just amazing, and yeah. Their recipe is not bad either, so we are gonna order a few dishes. We're gonna eat here, and you can see they also have cool street food, street side seating. And we're gonna get some simple recipes of this dish. Let's check it out. So I love the soft bean curd. That is the highlight for me with the with the pungent, the ginger. It is so good and I love how strong they make their ginger. and most people actually get it in bags to go. I just love sitting here to enjoy the atmosphere, you know? Okay, let's sit down. So this is, this is one dish I think I could never ever get bored of. Plenty of times I do have this every evening. And the ginger, well, in Chinese traditional medicine, actually, you should have ginger in the morning and the soy milk at night. But I usually get both of them at night. And in Thailand, usually this cart is a cart that opens at night. So anyways, for me, I think of this as a nighttime snack. And for me, this is actually dessert. Sorry for the low light. Really, this is such a common street food snack to have in Thailand, but this this is my favorite, and I come to them for a reason. The ginger is always so strong. I love how thick, just thick with flavor. It is not a weak soup at all. You better be ready. This is like medicinal. It's so powerful, that ginger. Mm. And it's balanced by the softness, just the very simple, soft bean curd. It's, it's almost flavorless, actually, but it just goes so well in this dish, and then you have texture. The bean curd is silky smooth and then these fried bits of dough, you can get them with or without. They are so nicely crispy, crunchy. It is just, it's just a complete snack package. I love it. Mm. 